The views expressed on the Warren and Bradley show are not necessarily those held by the hosts, Warren and Bradley, nor those of the proprietors of the website, warrenandbradley.com. Five, four, three, two, one, fire! Let's make some magic. It is magic time! Hello, and welcome once again to the Warren and Bradley Show. I am one of your hosts, Bradley Venter. I am one of your hosts, Warren Van. I like how I altered that a little bit. Yeah, it was great. You sound like a robot when you say your name. Warren Van. Yeah. You're like one of those, what are those called? The Vocaloid? That weird Japanese synthesizer thing that people use where it's like... They sing these weird songs. You can just input melodies and harm and like notes and stuff into it. Are you accusing me of being a robot right now? Is that <laughs> what you're possible. doing? It's possible. I think listeners might be suspicious of the fact as to whether or not you're a real person or not. You're because just... the things I say are so witty and amazing <laughs> and off the cuff that you think that their thought had gone to it. Well, beforehand. I think maybe they're suspicious as to whether or not I could actually have any friends, and so I might just be here you by myself, like a, a desperate, angry man <laughs> on the podcast. Yeah, a little desperate. I don't know about that. And I'm your little robot that you program things into to respond to you. Well, it is episode 43 on the Warren and Bradley show. It is. Um, some updates right off the bat. Oh, good. I want to say hello to our very first Japanese Twitter <laughs> follower. <laughs> yeah. I was quite excited because, you know, I'm kind of a Japanophile and saw someone named Karin is following us now. And she seems like a real person. I don't know. I'm skeptical. So I'll just say, Konnichiwa, Karin-san. You're not a real person. You're just some guy in his basement who's pretending to be a girl. Uh... Does a pretty good job of it, anyway. And if he was pretending to be a girl, he picked a good-looking girl to pretend to be. Uh, uh, well, no, of course, which is yeah, what you exactly. Would do, yeah. That's how you know that someone's <laughs> fake, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, no, she, I don't think she is. I think that's our only international. If she's real, she's our only international Twitter follower. No Canadians? Uh, I don't know. I thought we had a big following in Romania. I, I don't think you mentioned that earlier. Well, not on Twitter. Not on Twitter. I don't think Canadians like us in general. Um, oh, we bad. We talk have the Canadians. Well, we have way more UK listeners than we have Canadian listeners. Really? Yeah. Oh. They just had bad taste in general. We don't have any followers from the UK on Twitter, though? I don't think so. Do no. people in the UK use Twitter? I think they do. I think they're just as annoying as we are with social media in the UK. Okay, I think you're right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah whatever. Um, what else? I had other business to discuss. Yeah, you, you started the podcast talking about all this business. And oh, you, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. An update on the fatwa I issued against Keith Cox oh, Autobahn yeah, yeah, yeah. on the last episode. Uh, Cleric Bradley has now declared the fatwa has been rescinded. So if any of my holy warriors out there were going to go picket Keith Cox Autobahn, you don't have to anymore. We've because, resolved the oh, issue. Oh, yeah, you've resolved the issue because you've received a payoff. Well, basically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, okay, so I'm not, the kind of person, I'm not the kind of person who sends food back in restaurants. I don't usually complain about things, but... In, I don't. No, not not to actual authority. Like, okay, yeah, sure. You know, like if I receive some shoddy product or something, I usually don't bother writing a letter. But you just or won't bitching. get that product again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just chalk it up to experience. But as you know, I won't go through the whole story again. But I was obviously angered, angered about my experience. And last show, I told you why. And so I had written them an email, and after a week, I had gotten no response from them. Yeah. And so that made me even more angry. Mm -hmm. So I had held off my crazy vendetta until I got a response, because I yeah. wanted them to have a chance to explain. Never heard from them, so then I went, ah, and went, started going crazy on social media yesterday. And within five minutes of me posting this shit, I got a Facebook message from them. It's like, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, let's talk about this. What's going on? And so we had a little discussion online. They claimed they had never gotten the email or it just got sent to spam or something. Mm. And whatever, I believe them, maybe. Well, of course, but now they're your best now, friends. Now I do, yeah. God, and so, turncoat you are. <laughs> well, it just goes to show that if you want something, you should bitch about it loudly online. Do you mean, imagine if Gandhi like took <laughs> a couple hundred bucks to just stop? You know what I mean? Yeah. Come on. Uh, well. Have some principles, man. I'm not trying to set free the Indian people. I'm just trying to get a couple hundred bucks back. Wow. It doesn't it doesn't completely cover all my pain and suffering and emotional anguish, but it, it, it's something, I guess. It'll cover the cost of my new iPhone, which I'm also very excited about. <laughs> <laughs> what else? There's other business to discuss. Well, I'll anything? make sure everyone's updated on my fantasy football team. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, how, are you, how are you going there? 
Today, uh, it looks like I'm going to win today. Um, Aaron Rodgers didn't really deliver for me on Thursday. Mm-hmm. He put up a pretty poor game, but Darren Sproles came through this morning and put up some points no for me. No idea who that is. And my competitor isn't doing so well. So I think I'm going to pull it out this week. So and you be 2-0. Guys, okay. Let me try to understand this. All right. You guys have actual games, like one of you yes. in the league against another person yes. in the league. And so... How is the score tallied? Is it yardage? Is it what is what It's a combination of like if your running back rushes for 10 yards, he gets a point. And if yeah. he scores a touchdown, he gets like seven points for that. Okay. There's like a scoring structure I don't completely understand. Is this all just kind of plugged in? Do you use a computer program to do all this? Oh, like a, God, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all very advanced. Okay. And so it tracks all the stats for you. Yeah. And, and it comes in in real time and like changes okay. them as it's going on. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of exciting. So you can sit there watching the game. Oh, it makes it much place. more exciting to sit there. And then you're like <laughs> rooting against people. Unfortunately, I was having to root against one of the Seahawks this afternoon because he was on my opponent's right. team, and I was like hoping they would score touchdowns, not give it to that guy. Fascinating. Oh, it's very fascinating. <laughs> Don't worry, everybody. I'll keep you updated on the uh, progress of the Victorian Dandies, how they're doing this season. Oh, that's the name of the team. Oh yeah, yeah. I like that. That's yeah, good. It's good. I don't know if it would fly in the actual NFL, but hey, if you can back it up, <laughs> what's their mascot? Is some I, did, I used to have a picture of uh, Oscar Wilde, yeah, yeah, just oh, yeah, kind of like prancing around and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not the toughest look for yeah. a football team, but I don't know. Yeah, we're successful. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I don't know anything about sports, so I'm pretending <laughs> to. I, I hear things, yeah, and they they stick every once in a while. Like you know, like I heard that Aaron Rodgers was the top rated quarterback. Yeah, and so I don't really even know what how the quarterback rating is tabulated or anything. But I'm like, okay, I I know this and I will remember this. And so if anyone does bring up sports, yeah, just so I don't seem like a complete idiot, I'll throw one of those facts. Aaron Rodgers is the top rated yeah. quarterback. You'll say that, yeah, yeah, over and over and over again. Now you can say the name Darren Sproles. Darren Sproles. All yeah. right. Is he a running back? Yes. Okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I'll use that for future. Um, I was having a good day today. I'm kind of shocked by how nice the weather still is this late in September. This is September, though. This is what happens yeah, here. Yeah, but usually we get dumped on a little bit with rain. It's hardly rain at all. A little bit, but it, this is, it goes July, August, September. Those are the nice months. All our listeners know, and ha- there's the stereotype that Seattle gets a lot of rain, and Bellingham is basically the same. Um, Bellingham gets less rain, but more Accumulation, but more days of We, we see yeah. less sun than any other city in the United States. Yes. Any, any other city over a certain population, yeah. I think. Yeah. In the contigu- contiguous us i think you should think why well, you think I there's think an so. alaskan city that gets more maybe it was also it was here and it was in the united states it was also bad like erie pennsylvania and some of those areas were also mm. notoriously bad yeah which are places no one wants to live well because i thought the whole uh stephanie myers twilight bullshit with forks washington was supposed to be that that was the place that got the least amount of sunlight now maybe really? vampires are going to move to Bellingham. Oh, that's why. Oh, uh, that makes sense, right? Because that's right. why the vampires live there because yeah. they don't like the sun. Yeah. Oh, but well, don't let this fucking, information get out. God, these fucking books and movies. These aren't vampires. These. The whole point of a vampire is that they're supposed to be a certain tragedy. You're a, you're a tragic figure. You've got. Well, they are tragic because they can't make love. Well, you've got no. They can. They fuck each other. They impregnate I that was people. The whole point. No. There's, they have no limitations on them whatsoever. In a real vampire, you're supposed to be... You, you can't go out in the sun at all or you'll die. You have this horrible thirst that you can't quench and you're constantly tortured by it. And you have no sexuality whatsoever. Wasn't that all, what... your, all your sensuality is through feeding. These fucking Stephanie Meyer vampires, they can go out in the sun... They just glow. They sparkle when they go out in the sun, and that's why they don't like sun because people might notice. But they have to eat like rodents person. and stuff. They have to eat rodents. They have blood. to eat blood, but they're just like eating animals or sucking on animals so all the time. So what's the dramatic tension? And, and they fuck. They he he fucks. I thought he couldn't Bella. because I thought he couldn't because like he would do it and then he would be some so overcome with passion that he start sucking her blood or something. Isn't that the problem? Well, the the fact that their genitals even work at all. That's not supposed to. That's not the case. <laughs> it's not supposed to be the case. Yeah, okay. He impregnated. Who, who, since when can vampires impregnate people? Vampires are make believe. Well, I know you can make them do whatever you want. <laughs> it's just there's a certain tradition, and there's a certain reason. The tradition, there's a tradition of bad fiction, and this falls right well, in line yes, with that right, tradition. Right. Yeah, it does uphold all of the <laughs> everything that Anne Rice and Bram Stoker have done yes. before them. Yes. Well, at least the Anne Rice ones were kind of adhere Anne, to the old fashioned. Yeah, they, idea of they also adhere to the terrible fiction. Yeah, stereotype. a lot of, and the homoeroticism. That oh, a lot of the homoeroticism, yeah. despite there not being any like real sexual. Yes, yeah, their on. genitals didn't work. I don't think. <laughs> As I recall, yeah, they're, like, really drawn to each other, yeah. these, like, male vampires. But well, there's a lot of sucking, but not of genitals. It's just... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's enough of that. 
Yeah, so today I went out on a little pseudo-blind date. It was Ooh. kind of amusing. Um, I, I'm really sick of Americans. I think it's my problem. Wow. Because I, I hung out with this girl who was from Korea, and you automatically have so much to talk about because I am interested in learning about her culture, and she's interested in talking about it because I'm sure she's a little homesick. Like, any time I've ever spent any time with someone not from the U.S., I have never, ever had an issue about making conversation. It's always just flowed very freely and easily. And it's, it's, it's great. I like, you're like, what do they call Burger King where you live? Exactly. They, yeah, yes. yeah. No, you know, I was talking about the, I was talking about the North Korea issue and oh, yeah, whether right. or not she had any family that was in North Korea. Um, <laughs> talking about, I don't know, she was talking about how racist Koreans were. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's nice. Well, that's just supposed to be true of all those Asians, though, right? Yeah, supposedly. There's a lot of weird nationalism where they consider, like, Japanese people are a different race. Whereas we well, just well, like we just lump them in, oh, they're Asian, you know. Well, the Japanese are the most notorious, though, right? Too, oh, because yeah, they're yeah, all about yeah. turning every other Asian into like sex slaves and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Let's That's not... what went on. That was less than a hundred years ago. I hope Kadi, our first Japanese Twitter follower, isn't here. I'm just, this. I'm saying, not saying you guys are doing it anymore. Yeah. But what you were doing in the 1930s in Korea well, and China, the, the rape of Nanking and everything. Yeah, like that. all that stuff. Yeah. Come on. Well. But that stems more from the Japanese idea at the time that if you were beaten in battle you had no honor and so anything that happened to you was just kind of par for the course yeah this is why japanese people if they were captured in world war ii they expected to be tortured and murdered oh, and also, so yeah. that was why they tortured and murdered people who they captured it was also the reason thought, when we were going island to island in the pacific uh we would win and then the women and children or who else was would on the island themselves. would kill themselves yeah. and jump off the cliffs and stuff and the people would be like no 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 yeah. we're, we're not, not going like, to torture you yeah. we're not like you <laughs> we're not going to do that but they don't understand that because they assume that we are like them yeah. 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 Uh, yeah they're not, I like them. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a Japanophile. And that was the thing, too. This girl spoke Japanese, too. So I was pointing to things and being like, Kore wa nondesuka? Like asking her how to say that in Why Japanese. Why did she know Japanese? Because uh, she was going to study abroad there. So she had learned. It, this, this is what irritates me about being an American is that we never learn other languages because we don't have to. We're number one. And with her, I was like, oh, so why did you learn Japanese? And she's like, oh, I was planning on going to study there, so I learned it. Okay, it's just like that. Yeah. So you just learned it. And then English. She learned English after Japanese, apparently. And she's like, yeah. So then I decided I was going to study in, in America instead, and so I learned English. Like, how long were you studying English? English? Oh, about a year and a half. And she spoke fine. I mean... That, that annoys me. Just the idea, and Americans, I don't think, have that. The idea that we can learn a language and speak it fluently. Obviously, people can, but that's just not in our mind that you're just going to do that. Almost every other culture, the incidence of bilingualism, bilingualism, yeah. bilingualism, yeah, yeah, yeah. is much more prevalent than that. Well, uh, it all gets back to the fact that I have almost nothing but disdain for our formal education system in this country. Yeah, it's The horrible. fact that people just show up and then they're just having awkward social, social skills that's, that's and happening and things like that. They're not, you don't really learn anything beyond the fourth grade. Well, you're so not... You're you're taught, at, least, at least if you learned a language, you would probably pick that up, right? Yeah. Oh, and that's... that's skill. I find it ridiculous that we don't start doing languages until high school. You should be teaching first graders and kindergartners different languages, but at the same time, what language do you pick? Well, the problem is if you... The most obvious language should be Spanish. Spanish, obviously. Because it's the most yeah. applicable in like our hemisphere, and yeah. there are many speakers around. But that is a whole loaded issue, too. Exactly. There's a, there's a lot of political ramifications to people, that. People, the, the baby boom generation that I speak to about it, are really angered by the fact that things are yeah. written in Spanish. Yeah, whatever. Sometimes there's all that stuff. So you, you'd have to like get around that well, to be you able could, to teach you it. You could teach the fucking kids Bulgarian. And it would still be useful <laughs> later in life because yeah. if you are bilingual as a child, it is much easier for you to learn languages oh, later. Oh, sure, because that's when your language acquisition yeah. abilities are at their peak. And me, I mean, I took Japanese in college and I've tried over the years to get back into it. And I'm just like, oh, God, I just it just doesn't stick. It doesn't stick. No, it's difficult. Yeah. And of the many things in life that you can be like autodidactic about and learn about yourself, language is one of the most difficult things to yeah. just like, I'm going to teach myself a language, something that's a social thing and something that when you learn your own language yourself, you weren't consciously even doing it. Right. You're just picking it up as you were around right. a bunch of people, which you could probably do if you just like plop down yeah, in Japan that's, now. That's the problem with speaking English as your native language is because you're never forced to learn anything else because pretty much everyone has some English. Even if you're in the middle of... 
I don't know, Bangladesh, you're yeah. going to run into somebody who speaks English and you're not going to be forced to learn the native language. Well, it's the necessity is another invention thing, right? Yeah. Because if you are just stuck in Bangladesh and yeah. there's like no one to talk to and you have to get <laughs> by during your day, you know, yeah. you're going to pick it up. What do they speak in Bangladesh? Um, I think they speak uh, probably is there all those... Bangladeshi or there's just a bunch of tribal languages. There's a bunch probably. of those languages down there that yeah. they speak this in the Southeast Asia, right? Yeah. They probably depend on what tribe you're in. Or whatever. I Who knows? Know. Speaking of weird languages, you know, my morning routine when I'm going to work, I wake up at about 530 in the morning, make some coffee. Yeah. And I sit on the couch, sit my coffee, go over my email correspondence and other things throughout the day. You have that much email correspondence? Not really. No. Okay. But I was sitting there. It's probably about 630 in the morning, sipping my coffee. This was about two days ago. And my phone rings. And the only person who would be calling me that early would be my boss, who was also my dad. And <laughs> yeah. the... Uh, the number on the phone said unknown. Yeah. Which I've never had. I've always had blocked. And oh, really? Usually if my dad calls me from home, it's blocked. But if he calls me from a cell phone, it has a number. So anyway, I was like, okay, this must be my dad. I answer the phone. Yeah. Ring, ring. Hello? Abba. Abba, Jack. Uh, hello? Enoch. Who's calling, please? Abba. Who, who is this? Abba, Okay. So this was an Asian language? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Hang up. Yeah. Like I said, I know a little Japanese. I'm familiar with other Asian languages, not to speak, but I can, if I hear a language, I can usually say, okay, that's Korean, or that's Mandarin, or that's... Bangladeshi. Or that's Bangladeshian. <laughs> or, you know, I can... Yeah. This sounded like no language I've ever heard in my entire life. Just somebody making noises. It sounded like a crazy person just speaking gibberish into the phone. Yeah. And I don't know if that was actually actually the case. It was just somebody trying to fuck with me yeah. or just being a weirdo. But ten minutes later, ring, ring, ring. Unknown again. Hello? Abba. Abba, da. Who is this? Nina. Okay, it's a little creepy. It's a little bit like a David Lynch film now <laughs> well, at this point, it was right? Like, and the weird thing is, is, too, the line was very scratchy. It was yeah, like... This is, yeah, and it's, it's like, creepy. Abba, da. And my only explanation is that it was some crazy person fucking with me. Or no, oh, I don't. I have no idea where you're going here. This, I can't think of any theory. Maybe it was an interstellar phone call. Maybe it was some sort of alien communication that I was picking up on my cell phone from like Beetlejuice so definitely, or something. Because that's true. Because if they were doing that in there, they definitely wouldn't block intentionally their number, no. and they wouldn't have a number to really use, would they? And my luck, it was probably like some homeless alien who found like a prepaid interstellar communication device at a spaceport somewhere yeah. and just started plugging in random numbers. And of course he gets me because I've got, I get text messages from homeless people on earth yeah. and phone calls from homeless people on earth. So why not a homeless alien? Just our, the first human communication with an alien species. And it's some homeless bum fucking with me. It's, Abba. Not, it's not impossible. Yeah. And then I, I, I'd be hello. Hey, and of course, I keep trying to communicate with this yeah. alien. And then I would hear, like, maybe off as an aside, like, oh, like and then it would get back in the phone. They're oh, consulting somebody else I don't like, know. about what to do. He, he, he kept him back with this, hello, what's going on here? Yeah. Maybe this was their big attempt to communicate. <laughs> and people are like, th th people are always skeptical about this guy. Yeah, all the scientists planet. at SETI and everything. They're like, like, you're an asshole. You don't know what you're talking about. He's like, no, I'm sure there are these, like, human beings on yeah. this planet called Earth many uh -huh. light years away. Uh -huh. And they're like, okay, you got one shot. You know, we'll s you can send this message. <laughs> and he's, like, trying to talk. And he's getting nothing from you. Uh, well, I'm saying hello. You would think he would have done his research a little bit. Well, his, his that probably just sounded like, ah, <laughs> nah, nah, back to him, right? I can, I, I can imagine them for years, you know, working out this internet. It's kind of like Esperanto or something. This, uh, this, oh, the kind of language that, like, that everyone any would be living able to understand. being would be able to understand this. So apparently, abba, abba, da. <laughs> Hello there. Yeah. Kind of freaked me out. Uh, I got three calls, though. Oh, three, really? Yeah. Um, I do like the idea that you can somehow develop a language that other <laughs> beings will be able to understand. It's kind of like that gold record we sent out. You yeah. know, it's like the idea that they would have a record player, maybe. You know what I mean? <laughs> Or that might be the best well, way to communicate. Well, there were instructions on one side as to how to play the record. To, like, build a record player, <laughs> so right? Your, so you can play it? Get your Victor record player and plug into... <laughs> no. Anyway, so if the aliens are out there and they hear this podcast, you know, in 50 years' time when it gets beamed out there... Yeah. I'm still waiting. I'm listening. Just give me what a call What if he's again. on his deathbed and this finally comes through and they're like, you're right all along, Ojam. And he's like, <laughs> Ojam. thank you. I think his name might have been Abba. <laughs> Is that a way to communicate with the, another species? Bradley. Just, Bradley. 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 <laughs> Obviously, that's the way to understand what we're saying. If we just say her names over and over and over again. 
Uh, so hopefully they'll call back. No, oh, I'm sure they probably will. Or at least some homeless person will. <laughs> Celebrity Minute on the Warren and Bradley Show. Yes, it is Celebrity Minute on the Warren and Bradley Show. And for our very first story this week, those British royals just can't seem to keep their clothes on. Kate Middleton, topless photos published in French magazine. Did you heard about this story during the week, Warren? Oh, yeah. How can you not hear about this? I one? had not heard anything about this until really? I started looking up celebrity news today. Oh, this has been a huge story all I guess, week. Yeah, this was first on, what was it, the 12th or 13th when this came out? It was early on in the week, and yeah. I guess I was tracing the progression of the stories. First, it was, ooh, rumors that this French magazine might have naked photos of Kate. Yes. Uh, palace saddened by rumors of naked photos. <laughs> naked photos published in French magazine. Yeah. Palace contemplates legal action against French magazine. And apparently there's the owner of the magazine in France, which was... Closer? Closer magazine. Yeah. Also owns uh, several magazines in Italy, and apparently they're talking about like doing a 22-page spread of more photos that they had. Oh, they have that many? Yeah. Those of you who haven't seen the pictures... It's very blurry photos, obviously taken with a telephoto lens. It's about what you'd expect. It looks like Kate Middleton with her shirt off. Her boobs are rather pendulous. I'll have to say that right now. It's in, I don't know who... <laughs> I mean, I don't know why people are so excited about know. it. It's, it's strange to get like, a blurry photo of a yeah. topless woman in an era where you can like see anything it's, you want on the internet. It's such a ridiculous invasion of privacy. They're at this private beach house. Somebody's and miles France, away. Right? This yeah, is what French people France. do. They had no reason to suspect... I mean, I guess they should have reason to suspect that there's going to be paparazzi trying to get anything they can, but they're just... They're out sunbathing. There's one... It looks like one part she's giving a little massage to hair, to uh, William's or neck. Maybe some suntan lotion on or there. Or maybe rubbing some suntan lotion on there, but whatever. I don't know why people give a shit. The royal family is looking into actually prosecuting because I think... I don't know what the laws are in France, but I know at least in America... If you have a reasonable expectation of privacy where you're on your own property and you're not just like naked in the street, you can expect that people shouldn't be able to snap photos of you in if a private moment. If you're not, moment. you know, a notable person. Or well, a person, yeah. even if you are, because there's, I remember Brad Pitt had a lawsuit against some paparazzi where there, people were going up on a hillside over his home with a telephoto lens and taking pictures of him naked in his pool. And you have some something. reasonable expectation of yeah, privacy. Yeah, like he's behind a fence on his own property. You're allowed to be naked on your property and not be photographed by paparazzi. Well, you would I'll, hope. I'll test that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see what happens. Well, I'm always naked in my apartment. That's constantly. true. No yeah. picture. Nobody's taking any pictures yet. Uh, not as far as I know. No. Maybe Closer Magazine is just waiting to publish. <laughs> so, yeah. I, it's just amusing with the timing where Harry had his whole naked craziness. And now yeah, Kate, keep your clothes on, Royals, for a yeah, little while at least, and let this blow over. Speaking of Prince Harry. More Harry news. Prince Harry's presence motivated Taliban to attack British Afghanistan base. <laughs> <laughs> the Taliban took credit Saturday for the overnight attack on a British base in southern Afghanistan and cited Prince Harry, one of the thousands of British soldiers stationed there, as a contributing motive. We attacked the base because Prince Harry was also on it, and they can know our anger. Taliban spokesman Kari Yosef Hamadi told the Associated Press by telephone, Thousands more suicide attackers are ready to give up their lives for the sake of the Prophet. And, and the Prophet obviously has more disdain for Prince Harry than normal British troops. Well, after the naked air guitar. Oh, yeah. I think Muhammad frowns upon Strictly forbidden in <laughs> yeah. the Koran. And drunken fumbles with party girls named Kerry Reichert. I don't think uh, Muhammad would approve. No. Oh, Next geez. story. Oh, Jessica Simpson faces backlash after sharing Maxwell's bikini pic. This is one of those obnoxious pictures. I clicked on this story just because there was a picture of a baby in a bikini, and I thought that was amusing. And then I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. And then I've come to find out that Jessica Simpson... Oh, it looks like she showed the picture on Katie, Katie Couric's new talk show. Yeah. And it's basically her daughter, Maxwell, who is just a tiny little baby wearing a yarn bikini. Yeah. There's nothing... If I had seen that picture, I wouldn't... Wouldn't bad any reason that anyone, no, yeah. that anyone would be outraged by it. British charity Kidscape spoke yeah. to the Daily Mail about why they took such issue with the picture. They were outraged by it. It was disturbing to see a young baby presented to the world wearing a bikini, the group's director, Claude Knights, told the paper. Celebrity choices carry great influence, as can be seen by the manner in which their accessories and manners are copied widely. 
added Knights. It is hoped that parents will understand that baby bikinis are totally inappropriate and that they contribute to the sexualization and commercialization of childhood. We should not be compromising the sanctity of our children's early years. I'm opposed to the sexualization and commercialization <laughs> of, of children. Of children. Um, Do you find this baby sexy, Warren? I don't think there's anything going on here that's making this baby. No. I don't think it's a sexualization of the baby. I think the, the babies fact run around with their little baby boobs out all the time. If this baby had been like naked, yeah, and I nobody would care. No, nobody would have thought anything yeah. of it because it's just a little baby. But putting a, it's not like a, you know a really trashy bikini. It's just a little <laughs> yarn thing. You know what I mean? Okay. If if you have like a seven year old girl with a tramp stamp and a bikini and like a g string, that's disturbing. Yes. Well, that's a sexualization of the yes. child. Yeah. As far as I know, people who are into molesting children yeah. don't usually molest six month old babies, do they? Um. Unfortunately, things like that do happen occasionally. Yeah. But I don't think this offers any incentive for someone that's so. like that. Like, no. Oh, my God. That baby is so hot. And I don't think this is in any way trading on the sexuality I of the baby. I don't think so. It's just like, I'm sure. I mean, it's just a little Jessica cute Simpson little outfit doesn't strike me as the most, say, intelligent person in the world. But I'm sure she's like, oh, cute, a little baby bikini. Yeah. And she put it on. She took a picture. I think this is different than the uh, sort of what a John Bonet Ramsey type situation. Yeah. Where you're no, like, that, that pisses me that off. That stuff's crazy. Creepy, and yeah. that's weird to do with your child. Yeah. But putting a little yarn bikini on your baby is not weird. We'll post the picture online, and if any of you become aroused, you've oh, got God. a problem. <laughs> okay, we have a couple of similar stories here, and I love these stories where... Basically, there was a Renoir painting found at a West Virginia flea market. And I've West heard, Virginia flea yes, market, And I've too. heard so many of these stories where there's somebody in, like, Golden, Colorado finds a Leonardo da Vinci sketch in their yeah. garage or something. It's like, how the fuck did something from the 16th century end up in your fucking garage? Yeah. And it's just the most ridiculous dumb luck in the world. But basically... A woman paid $7 for a box of trinkets at a West Virginia flea market, and amongst the swag that was in the box yeah. was an original painting by Renoir. There was a curator of an auction house in Alexander, Virginia, who said, Alexandria, Virginia, who appraised the painting and said that it is called Paysage Bold de Sin. Oh, that's, so that's basically, not bad. Yeah. Uh, we have a picture here. There's the painting. Oh, it's like a landscape. Yeah, it looks like a river landscape. Really gaudy frame on that sucker. Yeah. yeah. Looks like a Renoir. It says Renoir on it. <laughs> on the wait, frame. Wait a second. Is that, was that frame always I don't, like... I don't know. It there's, probably There's was. a very gaudy gilt gold frame that says Renoir <laughs> under the painting. I'm not sure if that was on it when she found it at the flea market, but I'm, I'm assuming if people saw that, they would think it was just a, a reproduction or a print or something. Yeah, probably. But uh, yeah, there was a story of someone finding a da vinci sketch behind their couch or, the, or they were just keeping it behind their couch or something and they sold it for millions of dollars this one they think will fetch at least seventy five thousand dollars at auction speaking of which yeah ming dynasty vase used as doorstop sells for 1.3 million <laughs> a rare ming dynasty vase that had been used as a doorstop in a new york home has sold for 1.3 million at auction the blue and white moon flask was auctioned wednesday at sotheby's its pre-sale estimate was 600,000 to 900,000 but it sold for 1.3 million the piece had been in the same family collection for decades the auction house said the family decided to sell it after seeing a similar piece in a sotheby's in a sotheby's advertisement they had been using the vase on a wooden stand that was used as a doorstop in their Long Island home. Jeez, Louise. That, well, that's just weird to think about that if you happen to be looking through the Th Sotheby's catalog yeah. and you're like, that looks like our vase we use for the doorstop. Did yeah. you bring it in for the $1.3 million? Yeah. That's bizarre. I was looking around my apartment today. No, nothing in here. It's worth uh, anything. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, that Yoda poster. <laughs> I don't that know. Yoda poster is a classic. The Yoda poster is a classic. Yeah. Um, other than that, <laughs> probably not. Yeah, probably not. It yeah. is a very old... Um, clock radio you have by your bed that is 1970s vintage <laughs> it's, very, very it's one classic. of those wood panels oh yeah, like yeah yeah lcd it's great yeah that's about it though yeah, yeah so i think that's the end of celebrity minute on the right, show this has been celebrity minute on the warren and bradley show So I know our listeners are going to be very disappointed to hear that we don't have a Street Freak of the Week this week. Mm. They're just, the homeless people weren't keeping their end up. I don't know what was going on. Well, I was walking down the street the other day. I had the, the alien day. homeless person, but yeah, no, that was, that was pretty no good. terrestrial homeless people. I was walking along and some guy with like a beard and a pot belly on a bike. So he could have been homeless? He semi-homeless. And he also had like a boombox. 
bungee cord to the back of the bike, playing How, like what? What vintage was the boombox? It well, it had to be eighties if it's a boombox. It's like probably nineties anymore. Do they? It, it was playing like <clears throat> Folsom Prison Blues, oh. really loud out of the boombox, oh, and he's sort of slowing down by me, and I thought he might interact with me in some way, but then he kind of like just drifted off into the road again. Have you? You've never presented a uh, Street Freak of the Week on the show, have you? No, I don't think so. I don't have interactions with them. I don't them. know why you're not as approachable as me. The theory was before that they thought I was one of them. No, yeah. So it wasn't, yeah. Yeah. That so was there's no point in annoying you or harassing you. No, 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 no. You. you can't get anything out of me because yeah. you just think I'm another, like, beggar. <laughs> so it's not like you're going to get a cigarette out of me. Yeah, and we don't have a That's How Women Are This Week either, and it's been a couple weeks. Um, I had one listener ask me to address something as, as a That's How Women Are segment. Yes. But the question was, why do women have boobs? And I don't really see where that could go as a That's How Women Are segment, because basically the only answer I have for that is sexual selection. Um, uh, my understanding always was the fact that when we were, like, hunched over, it was a way to differentiate men from women. Well, I don't know. I mean, we don't know for sure, but there's no evolutionary advantage for women having swollen boobs. Like, you look at, you look at monkeys or chimps and yeah. b- their boobs basically don't exist unless they're they're breastfeeding and then they swell up a bit and their nipples get all disgusting but with women we have obvious breasts at all times and the only thing they can say is that men must have liked that there was some woman with some knockers and people were having sex with her because they liked it and eventually we all did that's what that's why i say my theory makes most sense yeah because let's say you're a woman out there without any, and you're a woman who has some, and you're just, you got some fur on, you're like jumping through the trees and whatnot. <laughs> well, if, you're looking from, if you're looking from a long ways away, yeah. and you can tell it's a female, and There's you're like, oh, I'm going to go reproduce that with one. that. Yeah. The, the flat-chested, like, primitive creature, you're maybe not going to go for. You would think that back then there was even more sexual dim- dimorphism. For the idiots in the audience, that means physical differences between yeah. the two sexes. Uh, you would but that's think they'd be even though. smaller... Well, humans. I mean, apes. Apes have a huge amount of sexual dimorphism. The compared males to most are other. bigger. Yeah, way bigger. Yeah. And I would assume that if anything, the dimorphism has gotten less as human history has progressed in terms of size differences. But I don't know. I was I was at a show last night and I was like a head taller than almost every woman in there. So who knows? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's a little bit of that still going on. So I could tell, even if a woman had no boobs, I'd be able to be... Well, you think that's the direction it's going, though, right? I don't know. That I eventually don't... we're going to be like this, or all be like 6'1 yeah. and look the same? Everyone says that. Everyone talks about evolution following behavior. Yeah. And I don't really get that, because there's no advantage to it, really. Like, people talking about in... 500 years we'll just have one big finger because all we're going to do is press buttons and i'm like why why would that happen that makes no sense whatsoever well the the problem is there's no advantage there's no advantage and there's no disadvantage to having a bunch of fingers you can still press one big button with your index finger you don't need to have one giant finger to press the big red button yeah you're fine and so the idea that because men and women are gender roles are becoming intertwined now then that means that men and women will eventually be the same that's bullshit because there's no advantage to that. And people still look at men and women and still they still clue into these differences in the sexes between men and women yeah. and are attracted to it. Even if it doesn't serve a survival purpose anymore, it still has a sexual attraction purpose. But apparently, eventually we're going to be like aliens, though, right? I don't know. We're just going to have giant heads. With pulsating brains. Yeah, and, and like really thin like bodies. So we really go, need our bodies. Ah, bah, ah, bah, ah. Exactly. Trying to contact people many light years <laughs> away. Yeah, I don't see us. I think we're out of evolution now. We have risen above adaptive evolution because we adapt our environment to us instead of us adapting to the environment. But that is going to dictate how we evolve eventually, too. Mm. It's going to take away the advantages of being, like, really aggressive physically. Maybe. Right? Well, but see, everything is cyclical, too. And we always we tend to think that the way our society is going right now is the way it's going. Well, we to tend to think to it's the, we're always at the end of history. Yeah. When we're not. And as we know, as we've learned from that new revolution show on ABC. Yeah. Eventually, <laughs> the power could go out and we could go right back to where we were before. Right. right? And, then, and everything would be kind of reset to a primitive way of life. But if nothing cataclysmic ever happens. Sure. Eventually, we're just going to have big. We're going to be kind of greenish and have big giant heads and just kind of walk around robes. And be really calm, like Vulcans. It would be emotionless, yes. Yeah, that's going to serve us best. Yeah, be it's right. not the most exciting future, but I, there will be like... Well, there would be primitive humans who we'd make fight in our arena. Oh, I would think we would evolve beyond that kind of barbarism, wouldn't we? No. Well, we'd be eating some sort of like paste that we apes. make from like soybeans and that would soy get like us all... Green. Yeah, well, no, we wouldn't be eating soy like green. We wouldn't do that. Really? Oh, maybe we would. 
right? Because it would be logical use. to get rid of the It would be thing. logical to use that protein in some way, right? Yeah, yeah maybe we will do Once that. Once they've outlived their usefulness, you... And the people will gracefully, like, submit to that yeah. because they, it's for the best for the species. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what a dark, boring future that is. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little ways down the road. I don't think you have to worry about it. No, and then at that point, of course, when we start expanding out in the universe, we'll have to fight other aliens. Yeah, so then aggression will come back into play. Yeah, it will, but, but it'll be so we're gonna have aggression. So we're going to have to freeze some humans now and use them or their no, DNA. No, no, no. But that kind of physical aggression isn't going to help us against the aliens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it will. No, you have to be able to good at, like, flying the Enterprise around and, like, shooting people. Yeah, but you need to have that killer instinct. Oh, <laughs> We're going to have to breathe that back in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. So, so, oh, this is a good this is a good screenplay, right? Yeah. As society's evolving this way, they get a couple like meathead jock guys who are really aggressive. <laughs> the kind of guy, the guys maybe they get called you fag and like attacked you that one yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. They freeze them, and then when we get in some sort of conflict with the aliens, they uh-huh. bring them out and they're like, "You need to lead us. You're the, the kind of boneheads <laughs> that are really aggressive and know how to fight." And as the aliens come and go, "Ah ah ah ah, faggots!" Yeah, and well, then bro, they get really upset. Of course, and there's feel no sympathetic character in this no. because. The guys you're bringing out of being frozen are kind of unsympathetic, and so are the aliens. Yeah, and the future humans, too. Aliens. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Hollywood. Forget about that one. <laughs> um, do you ever go to restaurants alone? Uh, well, so I go to certain restaurants alone. Okay. Like, I go to, like, there's a uh, hamburger shop here in Bellingham in Fairhaven yeah. called Wins, which I go to, and I go to alone. I find it very relaxing to eat there. See, that seems fine. Okay. I, I go a lot of places alone. I go yeah. to movies alone sometimes. I'll go, and I don't have any problem with it. I don't feel somehow... I don't either, but I wouldn't go to the Olive Garden alone. I'll just say that. Well, okay, and that's the thing, because a a, a week ago, I went to an Italian restaurant downtown alone. Yeah, it's a little weird. And I thought nothing of it. I was just like, oh, I feel like having some pasta. And I walked (laughs) in there, and I couldn't believe the the pity that was directed towards me by all the wait staff and all the other people who were in the restaurant. I walked in there, and the hostess came up to me and was like, how many? I was like, oh, it's just me. And she kind of went, and like... Like, she choked yeah. and went, just you? And it's like she caught herself for a minute. She's like, yeah. oh, wait a minute. I can't deride this person. I can't point be out what a loser is. Yeah. I was like, yeah, just me. Okay. And she brought me to the table, sat me down. The waitress comes up. And she's like, oh, are you waiting for the other people in your party? I'm like, uh, no, it's just me. I'm ready to order. And she went, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Um, and she was really taken aback and didn't it's know what to do. to do. Why is that so weird? Because going to a restaurant like that is a social thing to do. But eating? You go there with a bunch of people or with a date or something, yeah. and you order your food for a waiter, and that gives you time to like sit there and talk to the person you haven't seen for a while or you want to talk to. Then they come back with your food, and you talk as you're eating and stuff, and maybe have some wine. And then you go. But that would necessitate having a friend and or a girlfriend. Yes, that would. Yeah. But that's why you don't go to places like that. <laughs> but if you well, went why, to... I, I'm not allowed to go to a restaurant then? You're not allowed to go to like a, rest, a sit-down restaurant like that, no. You can only go to places where you go up to the counter and get the food yourself. Well, yeah, I do that all the time. But uh, I, wanted, I wanted pasta. There aren't any fast food pasta restaurants. This is true. Well, the other... I guess you can get takeout, maybe. But I could hear the waitress going up to the hostess and was I heard alone like wafting back to me yeah there there was this table across from me where there was this obnoxious family this angry father and they were discussing the fact that i was eating alone and really in between him yelling at his kid by the for the way he was eating loud enough spaghetti. for you to hear it oh yeah oh jesus yeah um well there's like a thai place that used to be by my house mm. that i would go to and i would get food from sometimes i get takeout and that was like a sit-down restaurant yeah but i wouldn't consider going in there and sitting down at the table and then like having them bring my food out to me and me eating it there and then like paying the bill and i don't going. know i don't see what the big deal is it's, it seems like it's people not, have think... such this weird aversion to doing anything by themselves like going to a bar by yourself is just horrible you can't do that why well, wouldn't or, do that either yeah, it's just weird. I do I do that shit all the time. Well, yeah, but I, I can't get anyone to ever do anything with me. So, I mean, I'm just not going to ever do anything. I just go out. This is getting really sad. Well, no, it's not even like I... That's the thing is everyone feels pity, but I'm fine. It's like, yeah, I just... Oh, if you're fine doing it, then it's fine. Yeah. And other people might look at you and be like, that's really sad. Yeah. Well, that's what bugs me is that they expect... They think they're pitying me because they think I'm upset because I'm sitting there alone. Yeah. And they feel sorry for me, but I'm not upset. I'm just eating my pasta. I'm eating my cheese ravioli with meat sauce well, and enjoying myself. it should matter what you think, right? What they think. Well, it doesn't, but it's still kind of irritating that I have to get these pitying looks the entire time. It's just like, bring me my fucking food. I don't know. I just didn't, it would never occur to me to go to a restaurant like that and sit down by myself. Maybe I'm just not constrained by your strange hang-ups, Warren. Maybe. Yeah, but there's lots of other places you go. 
Yeah, but I go to all those other places. I want yeah. a pasta. It's fine. I, I it's pasta. fine for you to do it. Yeah. Just get a takeout box next time. Take it back to your house and be lonely by yourself and well, anytime, wallow in your own sorrow in your home. Anytime you watch some mob movie or something and they go in to go talk to the boss, he's sitting in some little Italian restaurant, like at a little two-person table by himself, drinking wine. <laughs> Are you wine. comparing yourself to <laughs> well, the mob boss? He sits there all day. If Don and he, like, Vito owns is allowed the place. to do it, well, so... Maybe that's where I'll just hang out in Deanna's all the time, and people will come and make supplications to me. Well, that's fine, but people are coming in to talk to you. No, they're but not. But if you were in the mob boss, and you just, like, went to, like, TGI Fridays, and sat down <laughs> and, like, had your, like, little, like, burger by yourself, and got up and left, right. that wouldn't be cool. Yeah, go to Jack in the Box by yourself. But I don't want... I, uh, I'm sick of fast food. All, all right. right, all right, fine. You fine. can do whatever, do whatever you fine. want. Fine. Fine. So, I know you don't have cable television. No. So you weren't watching any of the Olympics when this is going on. No. But constantly, just world records being broken left and right, right? Really, yeah. And then you look at these world records, and they're constantly being broken. And you realize that maybe the 500th best person in the world at sprinting, mm -hmm. if they had transported themselves back in time to, like... 1912 right they would be the greatest sprinter ever and well, be very famous yeah when everyone thought that the four minute mile was impossible and then one person breaks the four mil four minute mile barrier and yes. then everyone does you know it's like you're not a, a real runner unless you can do a four minute mile it's a matter of like timing right yeah and i don't think it's necessarily that people couldn't do that back then but they just didn't know it was possible and once they know it's possible then it's something that you're like okay i have to meet this goal maybe you think that's what it is well no, i'm sure it also has to do with modern nutrition and training and training yeah i like think that. so but i think about like some of the technological things where i often have these weird fantasies that i've discussed with you before where yes. i like go back in time and do weird shit as you're sitting eating pasta I'm sitting by alone yourself in my, drifting in off italian restaurant and getting pitied by people <laughs> Little do they know that I am having a little party in my own brain. I'm back in time. <laughs> I, I have plenty of friends back in time. But I always think about going like, you know, 30,000 years ago when oh, yeah. people, they had spear throwers, you know, the atlatls. They'd yeah, fling yeah, around. Yeah, those things, yeah. But they didn't have bow and arrow yet. And sure. I'd be like, if I could just go back then, I'd make a little bow and arrow, be like, bam, bitches, what are you going to do? And just start shooting everybody. They'd be like, oh. And there would be nothing. I would be the supreme commander of every little tribe that I came across because of my amazing advanced technology. Yeah. Just because it's not that they couldn't make bow, bows and arrows, but they just didn't know it was possible. It, it hadn't occurred to them yet. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I was just thinking about what we know now that we could actually use in the past. Because I could say... Okay, well, I know that cars exist, but if I go back 30,000 years, that, I'm not going to be able to make a Buick, you. you know? You yeah. Know? I'll, I'll make, like, something out of a tree trunk with some wooden wheels. Or you can like, draw a this. picture of a car in the dirt and be like, this is a car. People <laughs> look at you like you're an idiot. Yeah. 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 Wheels go round, drive. Yeah, they wouldn't know. No, no, no I wouldn't But know. there's certain things, like, I don't know, um, building methods, perhaps. I could probably... Oh, you have 21st century building skills due to your profession. Well, I could probably mix up concrete. You I really could probably think find. If I like sent you outside to a park right now, you could make some concrete. Well, I, it would depend on if I could find the resources around. Yeah. But I know what goes into making concrete. Yeah. And I could, if I could find, you know, lime and salt. Oh, I guess you could experiment like with it for a while. Yeah. Probably figure like it out. I know that concrete exists, and I could probably come up with a way of making concrete. But then through this whole thought process, I started thinking about. Of course, my mind started turning to violent pursuits. Yeah, as it will. And, uh, you know, so I had the bow and arrow 30,000 years ago. Or just having, like, a machine gun in the Middle Ages. Like a fifty caliber machine gun. Oh, even a m machine gun during the Civil War. Even. Well, well, yeah. They, so they had Gatling guns during the Civil War. Which they was didn't basically, work. Eh, they kind of worked. <laughs> they blow up You're in your hands. cranking that thing. Yeah, ding, yeah, ding, yeah. Ding, ding. It, I mean, yeah, it's not that effective. Yeah. But the ultimate, to me, yeah. would be to go back in the Middle Ages... With an M1 tank. Oh, yeah. There you go. Because what the fuck is it? Okay. There's people. They have their little castles. They have their strongholds. They're riding around on horses yeah. with armor. Very advanced technology for the time. Like the... Cutting the, edge. The cream of the crop yeah. in terms of military technology. I roll up in my tank. They put up the portcullis and take up the drawbridge. Or they put down the portcullis and put, take up the drawbridge. And they're like, ah -ha! They've got, like, their archers, right? In yeah. the battlements. And they have, like, tar they can, like, dump down the <laughs> yes, side, right? But I'm sitting here in a freaking... I don't know how many, 20 ton yeah. M1 tank with like a foot of armor all over the tank with depleted uranium shells and just like one ba-bam from the gun and their, the their ramparts fall yeah, down. Yeah. yeah. What are they going to do? Yeah. So but, I could basically rule Europe. Well, this is the thing. You could go around and you could start blowing up people's castles. Yeah. And you'd be like, and then pop your head out once in a while and you thought you were saying, <laughs> like, I'm in charge now. Everyone yeah. obey me. Uh -huh. But what would be the point of, I guess maybe, I guess if you get people to follow you. Yeah. 
That's the guy with the with the giant metallic monster that shoots fire out of its nose. Yeah, and maybe if you get some people loyalty to protect you once you get out of the tank, because eventually you have to get out of the tank. That's kind of the problem. Is you know you okay? You go up to the castle. Yeah. You shoot down the walls. You're like, okay, this is my castle now. But then you, have you a can't broken ass castle. Yeah, and then you can't get out and actually rule the castle. All you could do is go to the next castle in your tank yeah, and exactly. shoot that one up. So you'd have to, and then they'd just be chasing you on their horses the whole time. Because, I mean, I, I think they can go like 40 miles an hour or something like that, I think, a tank. Yes. And so they're, you know, a, a horse out of good clip is like 25, I don't know, with a fully armored man on the back. But they're like, ha chasing after you with their swords yeah. and spears. And eventually you have to stop. Eventually you have to sleep. Eventually you're going to run out of fuel. That's the problem. Well, and also eventually... I don't know if there's a lot of diesel stations back in the Middle eventually Ages. Eventually they're innovative enough people that I'm sure they're going to figure out something where they're going to, like, dig a pit where they think you're going to go <laughs> and then cover it with leaves just, and then you're going to go into it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, if you're mobile the whole time... I. I just love the idea of just being chased around continental Europe by these guys yeah. on horses while you're in your tank. You blow up a castle every once in a while, and they're like, God damn it. And they still chase you, waiting for you to open the hatch, because there's no fucking way they're getting in that tank. No. There's no way whatsoever. I don't know what... Yeah, they could try to, like, smoke you out or burn you out, but I don't know how they do it. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think there would even... Smoke would even get in there. You'd eventually run out of fuel. You would eventually get hungry or thirsty. Yeah, you run out of shells, probably. And you'd have to, yeah, you have to, we'd have to get out of the tank, and then the game would be over. The one, what you wonder is, if you have the tank, and you marshal the resources, and you're available to get some sort of loyal following, yeah. if you could take over England with a tank, and then after the tank runs out of, like... <laughs> Everything it needs, you could still rule from that point on. And you could you could use that. You could make sure that nobody knew that the tank was out of fuel and depleted. Well, you'd have to, shells. right? Because yeah. talk about the emperor having no clothes. Yeah. They're like, don't the mess with that no guy. Tank. He's got a tank. <laughs> if you don't have a tank, what do you got, really? I'm just wondering if they if they were ever actually able to drag you out of the tank and then bludgeon you to death with their pikes or staves. If they would ever be able to figure out how to run the tank. I was wondering about that too, because the other thing is if you somehow <clears throat> formed a league with some other people yeah. in the country and you were like they needed you because of your tank mm -hmm. would they worry that they wouldn't be able to have anybody else operate the tank right because yeah. how would they know how to operate and the you tank? wouldn't want to teach anyone else how to operate the tank oh, because God then you're no, obsolete because then yeah you, you, that special skill is what's keeping you alive yeah. I don't know if this is a good plan or not no, it'd be really interesting if it happened, though. <laughs> Time travel would be the greatest thing ever. Oh, I know. Just sending people back and seeing what happens, Bill and Ted style. There's the whole theoretical thing. I've looked into this extensively. There's all sorts of weird theories. The theory that I actually adhere to, well, not adhere to, because I'm not putting <laughs> this into practice, but the one, the one I yeah. believe in is the idea that everyone always talks about, oh, if you go into the past, you'll alter the future, and it'll fuck everything yes. up. I believe in the... Alternate dimensions? Alternate dimensions yeah. theory, where basically, if you go back into time, if I go back to the Middle Ages with a tank, in our present history, there was no Bradley in the Middle Ages with a tank. So yeah. as soon as I go back to the Middle Ages with a tank, that splits off into an alternate timeline, alternate dimension. And so I yes. can do whatever the fuck I want back there. I can blow up everybody. I can do whatever I want. And it's not going to affect the present that we Just come from. But it will, there will be some sort of like 2012 future in that dimension that will have nothing to do with this right. one. Where Bradley is widely regarded as the, the despot who took over all of Europe with his tank. Because you ever see like Stephen Hawking talking about like many years ago being like 15 or 20 years will be time traveling. Yeah. And people always say weird things like that. And you're like, yeah. the, do you think anyone will be time traveling at any point? Really? Well, I don't know. They say that it's, it's theoretically possible perhaps to go in the past, but not into possible, the future. Perhaps. But not the future. No. No. Well, I, no, I guess you couldn't hear you. Yeah. You just it hasn't happened. The past. No. <laughs> well, that'd be the other thing too. If you went in the future, maybe you went in the future of a different dimension. Yeah, I don't know. You went into Bellingham, 2017. We'll work on this and we'll get back to our listeners. I, I, the tank thing, there's a few kinks to work out. I don't know how many provisions you can actually fit inside a tank. Um, maybe if you had like a Bradley fighting vehicle and well, you, I had a tank. You Maybe if you had a nuclear submarine mm. and that has, you know, enough fuel on board that you can go for years on that sucker. Right. You have all the provisions you need. You really wouldn't have to come out. That's true. But it would be... <laughs> but you, you could but completely you, annihilate the country. But you're just stuck in the submarine all day. You'd be stuck in the submarine every day and it's not like you could do a lot of, like, really strategic... Yeah. You know, you'd be like, somebody messes <laughs> with you from one castle so you, like, blow up the and entire no, and side how do you, of that how do you explain to people that you're the one who caused this? There's a fallout cloud over where Paris was and you're like, I did that. Well, no, you go you over. That was some monster from the sky. You go over the coast us. of France. You like pop up. They're like, like throwing rocks at you. You're Ugh. like, if you guys don't bow down to me, I'm going to blow up Paris. And right. they're like, oh, wee, wee, wee. <laughs> they're very intimidated. Next thing you do, you blow it up and they hear about it. And they're like, 
they come out and they bow to you. Yeah. And then you're like, see you later. You go in your submarine and you take off. God knows what you do then. Uh, you'd have to like have them send wenches into the submarine or something and like just have your own little court inside That's what submarine. you want to do? I guess. This is for sex? And that's not all for sex. <laughs> it's also for loot. Booty. Not booty, but booty. So what? You want to get gold? I guess. I don't know what I'd spend it on. I already have a submarine. <laughs> you, know, you have the most advanced technology in the world there, right? And you have plenty of good food that's probably better than the shit they're eating. Right? Mm, maybe. Yeah. There's really no point to it. Right, It'd just I'm, be fun. I'm not going to do it. Fine. Okay. You convinced me. All right. Well, I think that's it for the Warren and Bradley show this <laughs> week. <screen. laughs> I think the last conclusion was really awkward. I don't too. Know. <laughs> you just have you have to end it somewhere. <laughs> the conversation comes to an end, and that's where it ends. So this is Bradley Victor. <laughs> this is Warren Van saying, um, "Keep your submarine underwater, and, and keep your tank, your full, tank of full of diesel." <laughs> Good day to you. <laughs> This has been the Warren and Bradley Show, brought to you by Warren Van and Bradley Victor. For podcast news and information, like the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash Warren and Bradley. Follow the show on Twitter at Warren and Brad. Subscribe on iTunes and leave a review. For episode archives and episode pictures, go to warrenandbradley.com and to contact the show, write to podcast at warrenandbradley.com. Really? Yeah. Oh. They just had bad taste in general. We don't have any followers from the UK on Twitter, though? I don't think so. Do no. people in the UK use Twitter? I think they do. I think they're just as annoying as we are with social media in the UK. Okay, I think you're right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah whatever. Um, what else? I had other business to discuss. Yeah, you, you started the podcast talking about all this business. And oh, you, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. An update on the fatwa I issued against Keith Cox oh, Audubon yeah, yeah, yeah. on the last episode. Uh, Cleric Bradley has now declared the fatwa has been rescinded. So if any of my holy warriors out there were going to go picket Keith Cox Autobahn, you don't have to anymore. We've because, resolved the oh, issue. Oh, yeah, you've resolved the issue because you've received a payoff. Well, basically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, okay, so I'm not, the kind of person, I'm not the kind of person who sends food back in restaurants. I don't usually complain about things, but... In, I don't. No, not not to actual authority. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, like if I receive some shoddy product or something, I usually don't bother writing a letter. But you just or won't bitching. get that product again. Yeah, you? yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just chalk it up to experience. But as you know, I won't go through the whole story again. But I was obviously angered, angered about my experience. And last show, I told you why. And so I had written them. In- he delivered for me on Thursday. Mm-hmm. He put up a pretty poor game, but Darren Sproles came through this morning and put up some points no for me. Idea who that is. And my competitor isn't doing so well. So I think I'm going to pull it out this week. So and you be guys- 2-0. Okay. Let me try to understand this. All right. You guys have actual games, like one of you yes. in the league against another person in yes. the league. And so... How is the score tallied? Is it yardage? Is it what is what It's a combination of like if your running back rushes for 10 yards, he gets a point. And if yeah. he scores a touchdown, he gets like seven points for that. Okay. There's like a scoring structure I don't completely understand. Is this all just kind of plugged in? Do you use a computer program to do all this? Oh, like a, God, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all very advanced. Okay. And so it tracks all the stats for you. Yeah. And, and it everything. comes in in real time and like changes okay. them as it's going on. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of exciting. So you can sit there watching the game. Oh, it makes it much place. more exciting to sit there. And then you're like <laughs> rooting against people. Unfortunately, I was having to root against one of the Seahawks this afternoon because he was on my opponent's right. team, and I was like hoping they would score touchdowns to not give it to that guy. Fascinating. Oh, it's very fascinating. <laughs> Don't worry, everybody. I'll keep you updated on the uh, progress of the Victorian Dandies and how they're doing this season. Oh, that's the name of the team? Oh, yeah, yeah. I like that. That's yeah, good. That's good. I don't know if it would fly in the actual NFL, but... Hey, if you can back it up. <laughs> What's their mascot? Is some? I, did, I used to have a picture... You're a real person or not. You're because just... the things I say are so witty and amazing <laughs> and off the cuff that you think that their thought had gone to it Well, beforehand. I think maybe they're suspicious as to whether or not I could actually have any friends. And so I might just be here by You're myself. Like a, a desperate, angry man <laughs> on the podcast. Yeah. Oh, desperate. I don't know about that. And I'm your little robot that you program things into to respond to you. Well, it is episode 43 on the Warren and Bradley show. It is. Um, some updates right off the bat. Oh, good. 
I want to say hello to our very first Japanese Twitter follower. <laughs> yeah. I was quite excited because, you know, I'm kind of a Japanophile and saw someone named Karin is following us now. And she seems like a real person. I don't know. I'm skeptical. So I'll just say, Konnichiwa, Karin-san. You're not a real person. You're just some guy in his basement who's pretending to be a girl. Uh, does a pretty good job of it anyway. And if he was pretending to be a girl, he picked a good looking girl to pretend to be. Uh, the, well, no of course, one, which is yeah, what exactly. Do, yeah. That's how you know that someone's <laughs> fake, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. But she, I don't think she is. I think that's our only international, if she's real, she's our only international Twitter follower. No Canadians? Uh, I don't know. I thought we had a big following in Romania. I, I don't think. You mentioned that earlier. Well, not on Twitter. Not on Twitter? I don't think Canadians like us in general. Um, oh, we bad. We have the Canadians. Well, we have way more UK listeners than we have Canadian listeners. The views expressed on the Ward and Bradley show are not necessarily those held by the hosts, Ward and Bradley, nor those of the proprietors of the website, Ward and Bradley. Dot com. Five, four, three, two, one, fire. Let's make some magic. It is magic time. Hello, and welcome once again to the Warren and Bradley Show. I am one of your hosts, Bradley Victor. I am one of your hosts, Warren Van. I like how I altered that a little bit. Yeah, it was great. You sound like a robot when you say your name. Warren Van. Yeah. You're like one of those, what are those called? The Vocaloid? That weird Japanese synthesizer thing that people use where it's like... They sing these weird songs. You can just input melodies and harm and like notes and stuff into it. Are you accusing me of being a robot right now? Is that what <laughs> it's you're possible. doing? I think listeners might be suspicious of the fact as to whether or not email. And after a week, I had gotten no response from them. Yeah, and so that made me even more angry. Mm-hmm. So I had held off my crazy vendetta until I got a response because I yeah. wanted them to have a chance to explain. Never heard from them, so then I went ah, and went started going crazy on social media yesterday. And within five minutes of me posting. Posting this shit, I got a Facebook message from them. It's like, oh, ho, 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 let's talk about this. What's going on? And so we had a little discussion online. They claimed they had never gotten the email or it just got sent to spam or something. Mm. And whatever, I believe them, maybe. Oh, of course, but now they're your best now, friends. Now I do, yeah. Kind and of so, turncoat you are. <laughs> well, it just goes to show that if you want something, you should bitch about it loudly online. You mean, imagine if Gandhi like took <laughs> a couple hundred bucks to just stop? <laughs> You know what I mean? Come on. Uh, Well. Have some principles, man. I'm not trying to set free the Indian people. I'm just trying to get a couple hundred bucks back. Wow. It doesn't doesn't completely cover all my pain and suffering and emotional anguish, but it's something, I guess. It'll cover the cost of my new iPhone, which I'm also very excited about. (laughs) (laughs) What else? There's other business to discuss. Well, I'll make sure everyone's updated on my fantasy football team. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, How are you you going there? Today, uh, it looks like I'm going to win today. Um, Aaron Rodgers didn't. 